Before becoming a winemaker, Norm Hardy worked as a sommelier with Four Seasons Hotels for six years. He then studied wine at the University of Dijon and apprenticed with several wineries in Burgundy, Oregon, South Africa, and New Zealand. In 2005, he opened his own winery in Prince Edward County, Ontario. It's a long red barn built into a limestone cliff, meant to showcase his spectacular wines, not the gift shop. Welcome and thanks for chatting with me today, Norm. Well, thanks for having me. We have a beautiful day here in Prince Edward County. The sun's shining. We have a uh, vintage ahead of us. That uh, if the weather stays like this, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a record one. Fantastic. Now, um, you took 10 years to prepare to, to become a winemaker, so you apprenticed at wineries around the world. So we know you're thorough, Norm, but are you also a masochist? Why did you choose Prince Edward County where it's so challenging to make wine? Well, I think you know, the foundation of all the great wines around the world, if you look at, um, look at France, uh, look where the best Syrahs are grown, they're right on the north of the Rhone right on the edge. The best Pinots are right on the edge in Burgundy in the north. Then uh, you go to Champagne and that's just, they can just get right there. And, and I, my, my feeling is those best wines will always be made on the edge and uh, climatically we certainly are on the precipice here. Uh, but most importantly, uh, we have these incredible calcareous limestone soils uh, that uh, I searched the world for and I found them 150 kilometers away from my starting point. Huh, that's great. And, and it, is that part of what makes Prince Edward County different from, say, Niagara? Yeah, you know, the, the soils are um, fundamentally a clay limestone base, uh, but it's, um, it's the type of limestone that we have here. We have a very soft, shaley limestone that we see in Burgundy, uh, whereas Niagara's uh, foundation of limestone is more dolomitic, uh, something that you see in the Dolomites in, in northern Italy. Um, and, uh, you know, fundamentally, both clay limestone, but here we have the soft limestone, which uh, makes this place very, very special. Now, I've heard that, you know, soils make a difference. I mean, that's the big talk, terroir, to use the fancy term, in the wine world. But does limestone and the type of limestone that you're talking about really put some sort of taste into the wine? Or is it just sort of a drainage issue that challenges the vines and makes them suffer, which in the end creates great wine? Um, I think there's no question that the limestone does not part its flavor. And, you know, I... Um, I, when I, I source some fruit from amazing sites in Niagara, and I, if I taste my Niagara Pinot and I'm right next to my County Pinot and I, where viticulturally they're treated the same, vinifications were very similar, um, but there's definitely a terroir difference. Um, the Niagara having less limestone is bigger and richer and more full body, uh, and then the uh, the county is a lot more feminine and delicate. And we see this in Burgundy as well. Um, you know, uh, the Cote de Nuit, the Cote de Nuit and Cote de Bone, the Cote de Bois is split into the Cote de Nuit and Cote de Bone. Cote de Bone has a lot more limestone, and the wines of the Cote de Bone tend to be more feminine and more delicate. And then you go further north, where climatically it's a little cooler, and you and the wines to be not as uh, to be less opulent, and it's actually the soil that changes it, uh, because in the Cote de Nuit there's a lot less limestone and more clay, and then you get these bigger, richer flavors. Huh. And so, is um, Prince Edward County also a lot colder than Niagara? Like in terms of the growing season, how how cold does it get up there with the winters? Um, you know, the winters are our biggest challenge, and why no one plants it in the county until, well, they planted 100 years ago and the vines died, and then uh, until the late 1990s is that we do get minus 25 every winter. Uh, we don't have a body of water north of us uh, that, is, uh, that doesn't freeze. So when those Arctic blasts come from the north, but like Ottawa, you feel them. Um, whereas Niagara is, uh, is, is protected by the lake. And uh, the lake doesn't freeze over, and uh, uh, we could have minus 31 here, and they could only have minus 22 or minus 23 in Niagara. So you have to literally bury the vines or part of them in the winter. It's called hilling or something like that? Yeah, we essentially, um, uh, viticulturally, we cannot grow a, a trunk system. Um, so all our grapes uh, grow very close to the ground. We, we do a, it's almost like a bush vine pruning. And in the fall, we take some canes that are grown during the year, and we tie them down to a wire. Um, on the ground, and then we cultivate the soils, and we literally put a, a big V-blade behind the tractor, and we tell the tractor driver to hit the gas like a New York cabbie would, <laughs> stay straight. And you watch the soil going up, and you think, how are those plants ever going to survive? And come the springtime, when we, do, when we, bury, when we unbury them, um, they, look, they look magnificent. Um, and, you know, the, the idea is not a new one, it's the challenge, you know, uh, people bury their roses. 
Now, when you've got 10 rose bushes, uh, that's one thing. When you've got 50,000 vines, uh, that's a lot of soil, and you have to be very efficient at doing it. And, uh, you know, the early years here were, were, were quite tough. We were developing systems on how to do it. Um, and now, um, you know, 10 years, 10 years on, uh, we, we've become very efficient at it. Wow. So what is it that you think um, Prince Edward County needs to do better? It's got all this great potential, but what needs to change and get better for the area as a, as a wine-growing uh, region? I, you know, I, I've seen huge steps um, in, in, in the quality of wines in the county, especially over the last year. Um, we, have a, we have a terroir um, uh, tasting every year where all the, all the county growers get together at the Crystal Palace and, it's a, um, and the public's invited. And this year I had some great volunteers manning my, my, my table. Uh, and it gave me the opportunity to actually get around and taste a lot of the wines. And what I was really impressed with, um, I've seen huge strides in the quality of the wines that are coming out of here. Uh, there was consistently a lot of very good wines. Um, I think as a region, um, we do, we're in a comparative world wine, mar world wine market, and um, our viticulture here, I think, is very good. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we, we need to continue um, to, to, to grow in our winemaking capacity. And I think, you know, it's of any other, of any region, um, you know, you see Niagara and I see the quality and the steps that they've made in the last 10 years and, and the quality that um, uh, uh, here we made these big steps. We've got to keep going forward because the rest of the world is going forward. We can't stand back and say we've got the greatest terroir in the world and, and the wine's going to make itself. Right. All this talk, Norm, is making me really thirsty. And just conveniently, we've both arranged to taste your County Pinot Noir. Have you got your bottle there? I absolutely left? do. I've got my glass <laughs> and I've got a bottle. I do, I, I do a lot better with the, I do a lot better with the, with the glass. <laughs> with the glass, yeah. Well, at least you're not siphoning it off from the barrels directly and drinking. So not, here we go. Not today. Absolutely. So I'm going to pour myself a healthy glass here. And in a nod to uh, the great Gary Vaynerchuk, this will be the last time I use this word, but let's give it a sniffy sniff. There <laughs> and tell me, what to, tell me what you get from your wine uh, in this County I, Pinot. I, I definitely, on the nose, um, I get beautiful, the bright red fruits that I always associate mm -hmm. with Prince Edward County. And that's that lots of limestone gives those bright, bright red fruits, similar to those of the Cote de Bone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is a 2009. We don't use a lot of sulfur in our wines. Um, we're starting to get some darker fruits coming through. And then uh, the color, I think, is pretty extraordinary. I, um, it it, it's, uh, it's, it's sort of, it's got a beautiful ruby, dark ruby color to it. Um, and then on the palette? Mm-hmm. Yes, on the palette. Mm. Um, this is, this is, for me, this is oh. quite Pinot. Mm -hmm. It's all about femininity and purity. And the acidity is great. Oh, my gosh. It just... Yeah wakes up your mouth, literally wets your appetite. Well, this is, you know, this is, I think, um, uh, something we've lost in the, uh, with drinking new world wines. And, mm. and if you look at the great old world wines, you know, the great Syrahs, the great Pinots from Burgundy, um, they all have firm acidity. And acidity is the backbone, it's the structure, um, it, what focuses um, the brightness and, 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 and palate very nicely. Right, and it really yeah. lifts the fruit. And I think a lot of people get afraid when they hear the word, oh, acidity, acid. I don't want to drink acid. But to me, acidity is to wine what salt is to, uh, to food. It brings forward flavor as well. Absolutely. And also, you know, the reality is most pinots are, 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 are drunk at, at the table when people are eating. Mm. And when you're eating, you have oils and things coating the sides of your mouth. And what you need is you need acidity to lift and cut through those. If, you have, if you're drinking wine that doesn't have acid, then the, the flavors of your food is, are, are not going to be as great. And secondly, you're going to fatigue of that wine very quickly because it's not lightening your palate. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really, you know, one of the great things we have here in the county is we get um, what I call physiological ripeness ahead of sugar ripeness. Um, in the new world, um, often they have to let, let the vines hang for a long time to get uh, to get the flavors, but by leaving them out there, they're getting higher sugars and lower acids. Mm -hmm. Here, we harvest grapes at 22 bricks, and that probably doesn't mean a lot to many people, but um, we harvesting wines at potential 11 12% alcohol, and we have flavor at this standpoint. But, you mm -hmm. know, the analogy I love to use is California strawberries are sweet. 
Ontario strawberries are not as sweet, but they have acidity and they have flavor, and this is what we get out of the soil sample. That is perfect, Norm. Thank you so much for, uh, for chatting with me today. And um, you've done your job. You've made me very thirsty. So uh, this glass is not going to go to waste. Cheers. Uh, it's afternoon somewhere in the world. And cheers. <laughs> and, and thanks for having us. And hopefully we'll see you and uh, all those listening today uh, in beautiful Prince Edward County this summer. Absolutely. Thanks, Norm. Take care. Bye-bye.